Well, good evening to everyone. I'm delighted that uh, our mayors have found their way here once again, all the way from the White House. I don't know about all of you. I had the opportunity, as some of you are aware, to serve the President of the United States for nearly four years in the West Wing of the White House. And I can tell you this, I never got tired of going to the White House. And I'm sure our mayors that had that privilege with President Obama today feel much the same way. It's a privilege. Good evening. I am Mickey Ivarra, founder and chairman of the Latino Leaders Network, who is our host tonight. And on behalf of our board of directors, it is my pleasure to welcome the mayors, our special guests, and community leaders that have joined us tonight. Started in 2003 at the United States Conference of Mayors meeting in Denver, Tom Cochran will remember. We incorporated as a nonprofit organization in 2006. The Latino Leaders Network now celebrates this month its 11th year of existence. <laughs> we host the tribute to mayors during the winter and summer meeting of the uh, U.S. Conference of Mayors each year to honor mayors who are bringing their communities together to include us, the Latino community. Tonight we convene the 21st tribute to mayors to honor two outstanding leaders who are bringing their communities together. Please welcome our honorees, Mayor Stanton of Phoenix and also Mayor Gray of Washington, D.C. But before we serve our main course, I want to recognize some special guests, thank our sponsors, and to hear remarks from the President of the U.S. Conference of Mayors, Mayor Scott Smith. First, some acknowledgments. Everybody in this room is important, or of course you wouldn't have been invited to be here. <laughs> and yet, as you, all of you understand, that there are some that must be acknowledged, and we're delighted to do that. Again, bringing leaders together. Well, who are some of these leaders in the room? We can't assume that we all know each other. We don't. First, my board of directors. Michelle Mingus of New York City. Michelle? I love Michelle. Ruben Alvarez of Phoenix, Arizona. Ruben. And my brother, David Ibarra from Salt Lake City. David. We also have a number of our past honorees that are with us, and we want to acknowledge them. There are over 50 mayors joining us tonight. But we want to take time to acknowledge those mayors that have been honored in the past, starting with Mayor Scott Smith, the USCM president. Mayor Smith, thank you for being here with us. I should mention for you that may not know this, it's hard to imagine you wouldn't, from Mesa, Arizona. A Mayor Elizabeth Kautz, uh, the U.S. Conference of Mayors past president. Mayor, thank you. Mayor Raul Salinas of Laredo, a past honoree. And of course, Mayor Antonio Villarigosa, also a former president of the U.S. Conference of Mayors. Mayor. Also, Mayor Wellington Webb of Denver, a past president of the conference as well. Mayor. Again, past honorees at this very event, Mayor Marty Chavez of Albuquerque. Mayor. Just a word about Mayor Chavez. So delighted to be working with Mayor Chavez here in Washington with the Ibotta Strategy Group One. And so finally, we're also joined by the, a former president of the Conference of Mayors, former mayor of Miami, Manny Diaz. Manny. Elected officials, we have several of those in addition to mayors. Mayor Executive Rashern Baker. Executive Baker. 
of Prince George's County. We're delighted to have him here with us. This is your third or fourth time we've seen you here, and I'm delighted every time we see you. Thank you. And also, of course, the longtime president, CEO, the person that really is almost synonymous with the United States Conference of Mayors, Tom Cochran. Yeah. We're joined by Tom. And here we go. And also uh, his wife, Carlota. Thank you. I learned about nearly everything I know as it relates to campaigns and elections and politics, thanks to my good fortune of being hired in 1984 by the National Education Association. And I still remain with them, they as a client of the Ivara Strategy Group. So I still bleed NEA blue. And I'm so pleased that the president of the National Education Association, Dennis Van Rokel of Arizona, is with us. Dennis? <laughs> and those of you who have already recognized him, again, so pleased to be joined by the former mayor of this great city, Tony Williams. Tony? <laughs> We also have Gustavo Arnavat, who's the executive director of the Inter-American Development Bank. Right here in the back there, yeah. And we have a nominee. A nominee that I believe is very important to the country, but also important in particular to the Latino community. And that is the president's nominee, Leon, Leon Rodriguez, who is the nominee to be the director in Homeland Security of Citizen and Immigration Services. Leon, where are you at? Right here in the back, right? Okay. And then a few of our community leaders that are with us here, including some important leaders from Washington, D.C. Let's start, though, with uh, Brent Wilkes, the National Executive Director of LULAC. Brent? We also have Esther Aguilera, the President and CEO of CHCI, the Pre Congressional Hispanic Caucus Institute. Also, Hector Sanchez, the National Hispanic Leadership Agenda Chair. Hector? Thank you. I said hello to uh, our next uh, leader earlier, so I know that she's here, Sonia Guterres, with the Carlos Rosario International School. Jaime Perant, a Yuda executive director, is a past community partner. Thank you. And also Gus West, board chair for the Hispanic Institute. Gus. We've also been joined by Janet Murguia, the president and CEO of the National Council of La Raza. Janet. Okay, we're now honored to receive greetings from Mayor Scott Smith of Mesa, Arizona, President of the U.S. Conference of Mayors and a past recipient of the Antonio Villarigosa Leadership Award just a year ago. The Latino Leaders Network was proud to honor Mayor Smith at this event last year, and we're delighted that he could return with us tonight. Please join me in welcoming our friend, our nation's mayor, the Honorable Scott Smith of Mesa, Arizona. Thank you. Thank you, Mickey, and welcome to everybody. Thank you so very much for this honor uh, to, uh, to speak with you tonight. Um, uh, you know, I was starting to worry there, Mickey. I'm sitting here at the, at the head table. You have two honorees, neither one of them are here. And I'm wondering, what kind, of, what kind of award is this when the people who are getting it won't even show up to get it? Then I remembered, I got it last year. This must be an incredible honor. They'll be here sooner or later. And they did. Uh, I asked, when, I, when, when Mickey asked me to give a few words, and I thank you so very much for this opportunity, I asked, well, what am I supposed to do? And I looked at the run of show, and it shows 
those and says Mayor Smith and Antonio Villaraigosa this, Antonio Villaraigosa this, Antonio Villaraigosa this. I realized I'm basically here to warm you up for Antonio Villaraigosa. <laughs> so on the warm up back, let's go. We're getting ready for Antonio. I want you to know, Mickey, I, I think of this award every day. I really do. Uh, if you haven't seen up here, it's a beautiful award. Uh, it's placed right in our hallway. Every day, my wife and I stand and honor it as we walk past. This, this picture of Antonio. Uh, it's, it's etched glass in there, uh, and it's, I, I think it's, Ant well, it's either Antonio or it's a death mask of Antonio. One of the two. <laughs> No, I, I want you to know what an honor it is for me, especially on this evening uh, that I get to participate in, in two friends that I've made uh, since I've been mayor, uh, Mayor Vincent Gray, and of course my fellow Arizona mayor, uh, 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 not Phil Gordon, no, Mayor Greg Stanton. I didn't forget his name, Mayor Greg Stanton. You know, and I, I thought back very quickly on, on w when you're in places like the White House or here in this dinner and things, I think of the luck I've had in my life and the seminal events that I have had that have literally changed my life. Uh, you know, life is a series of chapters. Uh, we all go through them. You go through one thing and then you advance on to something else. And I, I like to look back on the things that have had the most profound effect. And I'll tell you, there's, there's two things that I've been able to experience in my life. One of them was when I was a 19-year-old boy and I, I had the incredible uh, luck and, and blessing to spend two years on the Altiplano of Bolivia. And if you don't know what the Altiplano, uh, Boliviano? Uh, Boliviana? Uh, I won't sing what I sang to Cecilia Munoz, who was also Boliviana. Uh, but the greatest blessing to live up with the campesinos and the cholitas and cholitos up there, whose income was, annual income was less than the modest suit I wore, and yet these people taught me to love. They taught me to care because they found happiness in spite of their conditions, which truly was a tr struggle for survival that shamed what I felt. And they taught me how really to look at someone's soul and, and to, to experience pure love. Uh, and for a 19-year-old kid who had basically been selfish, like most of us had most of his life, uh, that was truly a life-changing experience for me. It set the stage for my second one, and that was when I became mayor. And I thought of this when Mick started talking about why the Latino Leaders Network honors mayors. And, and, and you said something profound, Mick, that you may not realize, and that's mayors bring people together. And I think it's natural that when you're a mayor that that happens. And the reason is there is no other elected office that I know, and this is my first elected office, so I'm, I'm speaking from somewhat a bit of naivete, but there is nothing else that immerses you in a community and just like my experience up on the Altiplano of Bolivia in the late 70s that gets you to know people in a way that you get to know people when you're a mayor. And the beauty of it is that you know all of your community. You get into all the neighborhoods. You know all the people. You thrive in the diversity of your community. You learn to love people because you understand their real value. And so I think it's just totally appropriate that you honor mayors because I truly believe that the greatest friendships I've made in my life have been since I've become mayor. I wouldn't be here, Mick, if it weren't for this great thing. I wouldn't have gotten to serve with a man that I learned to respect and to, and to tolerate, yes. Antonio Villaraigosa. <laughs> no, come on. Antonio taught me so much. I had the privilege of serving with him. We spent a lot of time together. And, and you know, here I am, a, a mayor from you know, we're the 38th largest city in America, but Mesa is not Los Angeles, and he taught me so much. And I learned Antonio a lot from just watching and listening and being around you. And thank you for those great lessons. And I've learned lessons from every other mayor I've come in contact with, and I find that mayors as a whole are incredibly good people who care about other people and who want only the best for their communities and for people. So, Mickey, thank you for recognizing this. And my guess is that you wouldn't have to give an award to any mayors for them to feel fulfilled or to feel as though they had been able to connect with their communities in a way that they could not do in any other way but serving. So to our two wonderful uh, recipients, thank you very much. And for all of you who are here to support Mickey and the Latino Leaders Network, 
thank you so very much for your support. Being from Arizona, we have been in the middle of a, of a, of a difficult discussion over the last few years. And it has tried many people's patience and souls, but I can tell you that we are coming out of the conversation has changed for the better. People are listening to each other, and I see better days ahead. And it's for the efforts of you and people like Mickey Barra. Thank you very much, and thank you for your connection with mayors and the United States Conference of Mayors, Mickey. He's pretty good. I'm going to invite him to the improv next time. <laughs> We've also been joined by another past honoree and past president of the United States Conference of Mayors, Doug Palmer of Trenton. Thank Mayor, you. thank you. We've been joined by perhaps, I think, the newest Latino mayor in America. And I'd like to take the time to recognize him, a longtime friend, Luis Quintana of Newark, New Jersey. Mayor Quintana. As, as has been said, the Antonio Leadership, Villarigosa Leadership Award was first presented to Mayor Villarigosa in 2012 in Orlando as he closed his term as President of the United States Conference of Mayors. It was announced at that time that the Latino Leaders Network would rename the award in his honor to be presented annually at the tribute to mayors to recognize outstanding mayors who are dedicated to bringing their diverse communities together. Mayor Virigosa, in his eight years of service as mayor of the second largest city in America, Los Angeles, clearly set what we believe to be the very highest standard of excellence by which all future awardees will be measured and we are thrilled to have him back with us once again. <laughs> you know, let me just uh, let me say something about Mickey. And I think it's a, it's a testament uh, to Mickey that so many of us are here. Uh, I tell people in every community there are those people uh, that bring people together. Uh, they're, you know, shepherds, if you will. They bring the flock in. Uh, and I don't know anybody, uh, anyone, uh, in politics and in, in, who's had a life in public service who promotes more people, others, not himself, but others, uh, who is such an advocate for his community, uh, but all communities, uh, in the way that Mickey is. And it's hard to say no to Mickey, as you all know. <laughs> Um, but I, I couldn't uh, be more honored to be here uh, because uh, he is a true friend and an advocate, uh, not just for the Latino community, but for uh, all the communities of this great country. So let's give him a big hand for all his work. And, and then I do want to say, you know, something about the U.S. Conference of Mayors. I, I was majority, you know, in the 20-some-odd years that I was in public life and really uh, in public as a, in elected office. I served as majority whip, uh, majority leader, speaker of the California State Assembly. I was a council member and mayor. But I tell people there, there was no job and I hope to come back one day. Uh, but there, there's, there's been no job and I don't think there ever will be quite like uh, being a mayor. Uh, and I think the mayors who are here uh, both uh, the mayors who uh, are still in the job and those uh, who, who no longer are uh, have uh, a deep respect uh, for what mayors do, uh, a deep love for the cities they come from. And the organization that has represented us and represented us so well is the U.S. Conference of Mayors. And uh, I, I just couldn't be prouder to be here uh, with my brother, Tom, uh, who we all love. Let's give him a big hand. Uh, I love that guy. Um, and I want to say something about uh, this tribute to mayors, because I thought uh, uh, Mayor Smith said it very well. 
you know, we are the folks that kind of bind communities together. Now, that hasn't always been true. Uh, I, I'll tell you something. I, I'm very proud of the fact that I'm here today, and I've said it many times. I'm here today because there was a Civil Rights Act. Uh, I'm here today because there was a Voting Rights Act, because people fought and, uh, to open up the door to us. Uh, and over, and I've said many times, it was that civil rights movement that made America all that it said it, it held itself out to be. Uh, but more and more, mayors are realizing and political leaders are realizing that we have to represent everyone. Uh, we have to connect the dots, uh, the, the many different communities that make up our cities. And uh, this award, this tribute, is a, a tribute to those mayors who have understood that, uh, who understand that, you know, we, we have to represent uh, the rich, the poor, uh, black, white, Latino, Asian, gay, straight, uh, Christian, uh, non-believer, Jew, uh, Muslim, uh, that we have to be uniters in so many ways. And so uh, I, I couldn't be prouder that uh, this uh, award is named after me, but uh, it, it really was probably a, a more, uh, I think, uh, a reflection of the friendship and brotherhood that uh, Mickey and I, uh, because every one of the recipients uh, could easily have had uh, this tribute named after them. Uh, I have the honor of, of saying a few words uh, about the two honorees, and I'll begin uh, with the first one, uh, Mayor Vincent Gray. And I know that he got uh, the biggest applause when he came in, and he did because he's the hometown uh, mayor. <laughs> but what a lot of people don't realize, he's also a mayor who has stood up. You know, it's easy to demonize. And you know, we're, we're moving away from uh, outwardly You know, racial animus. Uh, you know, some. You know, more and more people are, are very reluctant to say uh, things that you know that people might be offended by. But it's it's still kind of popular for people to demonize and scapegoat immigrants, and particularly the undocumented who can't vote, uh, who uh, you know can't really respond. They're usually uh, under the dark and, and not in the light. And Mayor Gray has, uh, from the beginning, understood that he had to kind of represent everybody. And he's done that very well. Uh, many of you uh, don't know, but you should, uh, that he stood up for the notion uh, and, and signed uh, the, the notion that uh, people ought to be able to have a driver's license. You know, the driving, it's actually good for public safety. Uh, it's a good thing that people have a driver's license. Uh, it wasn't easy to do. Uh, some people took umbrage with that. They fought it. You know, when he stood up and said, you know, look, a lot of people are using our public health system. It costs our taxpayers a lot of money when they do. We ought to make sure that there's some prevention uh, and basic medical care for these people. We had to get behind uh, those nonprofits to do that. He stood up for that. Uh, again, when a lot of people might not have made that an issue, but he understood that health is really something that we ought to all be for. And we could disagree about how we get there, but everybody ought to have health care. And he stood for that. Uh, and we want to acknowledge him for that as well. You know, Mayor Gray, the, uh, I, I, I understood, and I think we all do, uh, that uh, the best among us have to uh, represent all of us. And, and you have done that. And so I want to bring up uh, uh, Mayor Gray uh, to accept, uh, along with uh, Mr. Ibarra. I don't have uh, all those liner notes that Mr. Smith talked about. Uh, <laughs>
Well, first of all, uh, let me say good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, let, me, uh, let me begin by thanking uh, Mickey Ibarra uh, for the leadership that he has provided. Uh, isn't Mickey one of our finest leaders uh, in this nation who brings us together? Thank you, Mickey, for what you do. I also want to thank, uh, I'm going to call him Mayor Villaraigosa. He will always be Mayor Villaraigosa. Uh, he was the uh, chairman, president of the U.S. Conference of Mayors when I first got elected, uh, welcomed me into the, o into the organization with open arms. And Mayor, uh, you are an icon. You are an iconic leader, someone who we all have learned a great deal from. And really, it is a great honor for me to be able to call you friend uh, as someone who has done so much for so many mayors uh, across this nation. Thank you, Mayor Villaraigosa. I also have to recognize another mayor uh, who is here tonight, who is someone who really over the years has become a dear friend of mine. Um, he served for eight years as the mayor uh, of the District of Columbia. Uh, he was the president of the National League of City, Cities at one time and really took over the District of Columbia at a time when it would be an understatement to say that we were in precarious uh, financial uh, straits. Uh, he was the chief financial officer uh, and then was elected mayor uh, for eight years. And I want you to know, Mayor Williams, that you are someone for whom I have enormous respect appreciate what you've done for the people of the District of Columbia and appreciate the fact that you continue today to continue to serve uh, this city. Mayor Anthony Williams. I want to thank you, Mayor Smith, for um, taking on the responsibility of the U.S. Conference of Mayors. And uh, at such point that uh, you're not doing that anymore, you have a, you have a calling as a stand-up comedian. <laughs> so uh, you did a good job of, 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 as you say, warming up the uh, audience. And it's great to be able to serve with you uh, now during your tenure as, as uh, the uh, head of the uh, organization and someone who has created something innovative called the Innovation uh, Program. And uh, it's given a lot of us a chance to talk about things that we do uh, in our own uh, city. So thank you very much for your leadership. And to Mayor Stanton, the Mayor of Phoenix. Uh, some of you may have seen us taking a photograph earlier. There's a bridge, there's a nexus here that many may not know. Um, the uh, mayor, of course, is uh, the mayor of Phoenix, Arizona. We have a new chief financial officer uh, here in the District of Columbia. A, gentle, a gentleman by the name of Jeff DeWitt, whose previous job was the CFO for the city of Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, stand up and be recognized. <laughs> you know, it is, it is an extraordinary honor, frankly, for me to be able to serve in this capacity. I'm a, I'm a native Washingtonian. I went to the public schools of the District of Columbia. I went on to uh, George Washington University, and I've been here in this city my entire life. If there ever was a homie, uh, it is me. And uh, I'm delighted to be able to, be, uh, to, be, uh, to have this opportunity to be in this, this, this role. I also am delighted to be able to do the things that I think are important uh, to the city and to be able to be honored tonight uh, by Mickey and uh, the network is such a, an important uh, thing for me, uh, Mickey. Um, and you know, it doesn't get any better to be honored for doing the right thing. And that is exactly what we've tried to do uh, in the city is the right thing. I work with, every day, one of the finest group of leaders that I've ever worked with uh, in my life. Uh, you know, I'm sure there are others, other mayors who feel like they've had extraordinary uh, cabinets and leadership groups that they work with, but I believe that mine is the absolute uh, finest group. And some of them have joined me uh, here tonight, and I want to take the opportunity to recognize them. Uh, first of all, our Deputy Mayor for Health and Human Services, Bibi Ochero. Yeah. Uh, a gentleman who served as the director of our Department of Parks and Recreation, who did such an extraordinary job 
that I couldn't wait to tap him for the next responsibility that came along. Uh, you see, we, we not only are a city, uh, we're a county and we're a state all rolled into one. So we have an office of the state superintendent for education. And even though we're a city, we have a state superintendent for education. And that gentleman happens to be Jesus Aguirre. Jesus. And, and the person who uh, does a great job, she worked with me when I was a chair of the Council of the District of Columbia um, and then moved over when I had the opportunity to do this. She, uh, she runs, she's the executive director of our Office of Latino Affairs, Roxana Olivas. Roxana. Um, you know, the things that we've tried to do, again, are the right thing. Uh, I, I was glad to be able to sustain, and Mary Williams was involved in starting the Healthcare Alliance uh, here in the District of Columbia. It really is one of the things that's allowed us to be able to have a very narrow gap uh, between those who are insured and those who are uninsured. Even before the Affordable Care Act uh, was adopted, uh, we were in a position to say that we were second in the nation, second only to the state of Massachusetts in covering adults, and we were first in the nation in covering children. And a big reason for that is the Health Care Alliance. The Health Care Alliance covers people who will not be covered by Medicaid, and many of those folks are not going to be covered by other commercial insurance programs um, in the uh, country. Uh, we have a lot of undocumented um, immigrants who are uh, covered uh, by the Health Care Alliance. And isn't it wonderful to be able to say to people, you don't have to worry about waiting until you get very sick to go to an emergency room. You have insurance that will cover you, and you will do it in a dignified way to be able to go in and receive the health care that you deserve in a preventive and early intervention way. We also were asked at one point by the federal government, uh, I'm sure we're all aware of secure communities, uh, we were asked by the federal government uh, to have our law enforcement officers uh, go in and uh, enforce um, immigration laws, if you will, and we said we weren't going to do that unless there was some reason, unless there was some criminal act that was involved we were not going to routinely go and inquire about people's immigration status. If you want to do that, you are in the wrong city in Washington, D.C. to expect us to do that. It is not going to happen. And yes, Mayor Villaraigosa, we recognize, too, that there are a lot of people who could not get driver's licenses in this city, uh, people who work, who people, people who want to work, people who want to be able to get to their job every day, and deserve the opportunity to be able to drive safely and, frankly, to be able to create safe opportunities for other people to move about in the District of Columbia. So I actually uh, asked my staff, I said, you know what, we want to put together a bill and we're going to work with our council of the District of Columbia to get this bill passed. We introduced it last spring. It took a lot longer than what I thought it was going to, but those who have been in these jobs, you know that uh, things don't move as quickly as you would like. Uh, and finally this fall, we got the council to enact this bill that provides the opportunity for people who are um, undocumented to be able to get a driver's license in the District of Columbia so that they can go to work and get around the city just like everybody else. We, our, our mantra is one city, and we mean that quite seriously, and that is Anybody who lives in the District of Columbia, among the 647,000 people who live in the District of Columbia, is going to be treated with dignity and respect and have the same opportunities as everybody else. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the way we live every day. And I invite you all to work with us here in this city also so that the day will come when we have a vote in Congress we are treated with the same dignity and respect, and maybe we'll be the 51st state of the United States of America. Thank you all very much. Fire and brimstone. Do I have a witness? 
Yeah. I thought I was at church. <laughs> um, but I, I do need to add to something uh, that Mayor Gray said. When they stood up on the issue of secure communities, uh, they did it before many states have stood up. California has now st stood up and said, we're not cooperating uh, with anybody uh, who, because we don't, our job isn't to enforce a nation's uh, immigration laws. Uh, our job is to protect the public safety, and public safety officers need to be trusted by the communities that they serve. And we all know, and I hope the mayors who are here understand, Secure Communities was adopted under this notion that we were going to go after serious felons, people that committed serious crimes. Uh, and instead, the vast majority of people that have been deported didn't commit serious crimes. In fact, many of them, hundreds of thousands of them, didn't commit any crime. And the fact that you have stood up this way, uh, Mayor Gray, and that you're, the District of Columbia stood up th in this way uh, says so very much. Just give them a big hand. Uh, we couldn't be prouder of your effort. Thank you. You know, um, I don't have to tell you that Arizona is a great state. Uh, it's uh, one of our sister states, um, California and Arizona, Nevada, out in the West. And, but we all know that for some time in Arizona, uh, there were some uh, who were on a mission, if you will, uh, to divide uh, not just Arizona but the nation on the issue uh, of immigration. I don't have to tell you that we all know that this immigration system here in the United States is broken. People on the left understand that, people on the right understand it, and we got to fix it. Uh, some people have chosen uh, to really scapegoat uh, an entire community in a way uh, that uh, the courts have found are discriminatory. And there have been people, and as much as he joked, and he, he was nervous, by the way, because he realized I was coming after him, uh, and he thought I might, you know, do a tit for tat, but instead, I'm going to turn the other cheek and say something nice about him. <laughs> this man right here, Scott Smith, uh, stood up. Uh, he stood up when, uh, you know, Republican mayor of Mesa, Arizona, uh, not very easy to do, but he stood up and uh, he engendered my and our respect uh, for his willingness to do that. He stood up for comprehensive immigration reform. Uh, and Arizona's had others who have done that as well, and one of them uh, is Mayor Greg uh, Stanton. You know, Historically, Phoenix elects uh, more Democrats than not, but it's still, you know, it, you take on these issues, everyone, it's not easy. Uh, you're always going to have a large number of people who, who just disagree. And Mayor Stanton uh, hasn't uh, shied away uh, from standing up uh, with the courage of his convictions on the issue of immigrants' rights, on the issue of the democratic and human rights that, that human beings have. Uh, and, and that was particularly true around uh, the, the whole Arizona law and the debate around it. You know, he, he, he's un someone who understands that uh, Phoenix is a diverse city, and, but he did something, you know, virtually all of us understand that we have to appoint people from every community. But he appointed a dreamer, uh, and I think one of the first people to appoint a dreamer uh, that I know. He understands the strategic, um, the strategic nature of the border and the fact that it isn't just a place of tension and conflict, but really a place of opportunity. So he's led delegations to Mexico to, 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 to really uh, push this notion of trade and uh, 
uh, economic investment on both sides of the border. So for those uh, and reasons, we honor him tonight and like to act uh, Greg Stanton, the mayor of the great city of Phoenix, to join us. Ruben is supposed to be up here with us. Ruben Alvarez of Phoenix. Come on up here. The Antonia Villaraigosa Award. That's pretty cool. Mayor Villaraigosa, what, what an honor. Mickey, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mickey, just for the record, please don't have mayors follow the hometown mayor. That's not fair. I mean, come on. <laughs> mayor, great. Great speech. Really appreciate it. Congratulations. Let's give another round of applause. Yeah. Mickey Ibarra, thank you for creating this organization that uh, recognizes leadership not at the local level, but you do at a lot of national organizations as well. You spent your career, career in government, bringing people together, now in your private sector career, bringing people together for the good of our society. So let's give Mickey Barr another big round of applause. He's awesome. We appreciate it. And Mayor Villaraigosa, uh, this award, uh, what an honor it is to receive an award named after you. You have been a positive influence and role model for myself and so many other mayors and people that care passionately about public service that are represented here uh, in this room. I've admired you since the time I served on the city council uh, in the city of Phoenix. You know, I think everyone here remembers the massive marches to push for immigration reform that swept the country in 2006 and seven. Those of us in Arizona remember the marches down Washington uh, Street in downtown Phoenix, but the one across the country that sticks out in my mind was the one that occurred in Los Angeles, and that's because of you, Mayor. For those of you who don't remember, in LA there was a crowd of a nearly a half a million people marching through the streets of Los Angeles, marching straight toward City Hall. And it was at a time when many politicians, uh, where not very many politicians wanted to be around these type of marches. Mayor Villaraigosa met those marchers at the door of City Hall. He waved an American flag, literally waved a massive American flag, and he said, you are all welcome here. America is your country too. Every person, every person deserves a shot at the American dream, unquote. That is leadership. That's the real deal. That to me is a perfect example of how a mayor, through their tone and their own actions, can make a difference and send a message that every person in our respective communities and our cities has value. I think about that moment often mayor. And the two years that I've been lucky enough to be mayor of Phoenix, Arizona, I've tried to follow the example you have uh, set through my own actions and through my own words. I've tried to make sure that every person in my community understands that they are welcome in the city, city of Phoenix. It's important to all of us. Every person in our city understand that the diversity that we are lucky enough to have in the city of Phoenix and will soon be a majority Latino city uh, in the city of Phoenix. That every, thank you, that's great news. That diversity is our greatest strength, not uh, our weakness. And that's something that I want to do. It's something that I've come to believe that we have a responsibility uh, to do because with the continued failure at the federal and in our case, state level, getting real work done is falling on the shoulders of cities and mayors more and more. That's true everywhere. I know people in this room know exactly what I'm talking about, not just in Phoenix. And Mayor Gray, your leadership is an example of that, and the focus you put on lifting up your city's Latino community is a great example of what local communities can do. Your leadership is very, very much appreciated. 
And we all know there's been a vacuum in Congress, and I'm not the only person in this room who was incredibly frustrated with the continued failure of Congress to pass real, comprehensive immigration reform with a path of citizenship. And that failure has allowed state legislators around the country, most notoriously in the state of Arizona, to pass their own divisive laws. You know what you've read about 1070 and the state of Arizona, but I have to tell you something. 1070 doesn't represent Arizona. It doesn't represent Phoenix, the city that I am lucky enough uh, to lead. The city that I lead, and, and I have spent all, excuse me, I spent nearly all my life in, is compassionate. The city that I lead is compassionate and welcoming and has an enormous heart. I see all of those qualities and a special energy from our young Latino population, especially those dreamers in our city who want one thing, a fair shot at the American dream. They're hungry for it. They're willing to work for it. And when you combine that energy and determination and add to it bilingual skills and a sense of entrepreneurialism, we as a community have a better shot of a great future. It gives us an enormous opportunity to grow, especially when it comes to trade with Mexico and Central and Latin America. I'm committed to harnessing the strength of our diverse populations and using it to get our economy back on track for the long term. We started by working overtime to repair and rebuild our relationships with the country of Mexico, Arizona's number one trading partner. That takes time. And I've been lucky enough to be on trade missions to Mexico five times over the last uh, two years. And each time it is getting better because we as a community are putting in the work to strengthen that relationship, especially when it comes to the issue of trade and the jobs that go along with it. And I want to take this very moment to recognize someone who has been an incredible partner for myself, Mayor Smith, and the other leaders in this effort to increase trade with, with Mexico and rebuild those relationships. And that is our friend who Mickey mentioned, Ruben Alvarez. Ruben, please stand. Let's give a big round of applause. He's on the board of Latino leadership. It is because of your time on the Arizona-Mexico Commission and the relationship that you built and now are repairing uh, is helping us get the job done. It's for the betterment of the future of uh, Arizona, and I appreciate it. That work is paying off. Last, last October, Mexican's foreign tech, Mexico's Foreign Secretary came to my office, and we spoke about how excited he is that our relationship is moving in the right direction in Phoenix and in Arizona. And because of our progress, Phoenix will be opening its first ever trade office in Mexico City, and it'll be the only Arizona trade office in Mexico. Our efforts are going to benefit not only the city of Phoenix, the entire region, and the entire state um, of Arizona. I really believe that our entire region can have greater success if we work together to renew our partnership and friendship with the country of Mexico. And my friend, Mayor Scott Smith, I want to thank you publicly because of your support, not only specifically on the issue of trade with Mexico, and you've been a great leader on that issue as well, but also for your leadership as an advocate for immigration reform. It is not always easy in Arizona, uh, in our political environment back home, to do uh, what you are doing in that regard. But you understand how important it is for cities to lead, and lead in a way in time and time again that you've done what is right over what is politically convenient. And that is something that I've always respected about Mayor Smith. Let's give him another round of applause. And as excited as I am about the progress we made with our relationship with Mexico and Arizona, that is not enough. We have to use our pulpits, our bully pulpits, and use our voices to advocate for change. Uh, I was lucky enough to meet with the president, as many other people in this room was just a, a few hours ago, and I reminded him how important what he is doing to fight for comprehensive immigration reform, how important that is for Phoenix. And I would politely argue that no city, no region in the country will benefit by the passage of comprehensive immigration reform more than Phoenix and the entire Phoenix region. So we need everyone in this room, everyone in this room, to use your voice and make it loud to speak. I know a lot of people are writing this off, but I don't think it's time to write it off. Now is the time for Congress to act and do the right thing for our economy and pass comprehensive immigration reform. So I promise that back home in Arizona, I'll continue to be a vocal supporter and a voice to, and to try to pass the kind of legislation whose goal is to continue uh, to do the right thing. And I will oppose laws. I will oppose laws. We have one going on right now in Arizona 
which I think is going on in many other places around the country, laws that have tried to disenfranchise our minority communities, mm -hmm. particularly the Latino community. And the other promise I'll make, and you'll probably unfortunately be reading about this more and more, is to be a strong voice to support enfranchisement, to get more people to the ballot box. Uh, it is the right thing to do, and efforts to disenfranchise people is taking us exactly in the wrong uh, direction. And we're going to continue to push to raise college attainment rates around our Latino population. And as soon, in a city that will soon be majority Latino, it is absolutely unacceptable that the Latino college attainment rate is below that of other uh, populations. We have to do right by our young people and give every young child a chance to succeed. I'm incredibly honored by this award named for a great leader, America's mayor, Antonio Villa Ragosa, and I promise you that despite the progress that we are making, you have not seen anything yet. We're going to keep at it. Thank you for this award and have a great evening. Let me do this uh, with just a couple of remarks, if I can just keep your attention, and then we'll bring our program to a close. I want to take a moment to thank our event team. I'm sure that everyone in this room is involved in building events, organizing events. And you understand that good events don't happen by accident. It's because they are planned and prepared for well. I have a great team with the Ibarra Strategy Group, and I want to thank them, Joel Salazar, Lolly Rivera, Samantha Lopez. All of you are in the room, please stand up if you're sitting at a table. Carmen Valdez, <laughs> Jessica, Jessica Martinez, and Enrique Cortez, our event coordinator. I also want to thank Rachel and all of the staff of Smith and Walensky. Let's give them a big round of applause. Of course, thanks again to all of our sponsors for making the Tribute to Mayors dinner possible. Uh, for all of you, of course, for attending. Thank you very much again for joining us. This concludes our program. Stay for dessert if you like, okay? Thank you.